Hi, it's Paculus here. So last week we were talking a little bit about um, the training methods, so to speak, that we use at my firm. Um, we, we use the training pyramid. And for the most part, for the level of students that I have and for the level of horses that we have, we pretty much concentrate on the first three stages of the training pyramid. So that means we concentrate on rhythm, relaxation, and contact. Now, again, when I say this to certain students, especially students who've ridden before, they'll say, oh, that's, that's the European system, or that's only for advanced riders. Perhaps they'll even say that's just for dressage. And my goal today is to show you that that's not really true, that in, our, in my world, we use this with all of our students. And I mean, we teach our, our, our little beginner students this, right? They might not even be very good at it in the beginning, right? The, we want them to understand the importance of rhythm. The base of the training pyramid, and you will find if you concentrate on it, it will change a lot of how you train your horse. It really, really will. Um, it, I think it's the nicest way to train, um, to keep these sort of principles in mind. And again, it doesn't require um, it doesn't require a lot of skill to attempt the concepts. Perhaps we we have a lot of skill. We develop skill and get better at these concepts. But understanding them and, and giving it a shot is not that hard. For us in the riding school, when we first bring the horse out, we would always ask you know we ask the students to walk the horse on a long rein so that he can. Um, warm up <laughs> that's funny actually we we had uh, we were explaining to some students this is an aside we had we were explaining to some students um a few weeks back what do you call um the fluid inside the horse's joints that because we were explaining to them that you should probably walk for about 10 minutes to let the synovial fluid we have synovial fluid too right in our joints but the synovial fluid in the horse's joints to to lubricate his joints so i had told them about this the next week i asked them, i said who remembers what the name of that fluid is <laughs> that lubricates the horse's joints and one of my little students she's i think she's only eight years old she put her hand up right away and she goes snowmobile fluid <laughs> Okay, it was pretty funny. Um, maybe it's just a Canadian thing. <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty funny. Anyway, snowmobile fluid aside. Um, so the first thing we do, like say, is we'll walk the horses on a long rein for about 10 minutes. Let them really get stretching and moving around. Like they're not going to just meander around. They should walk because they're working now, right? So they should walk a little bit, but on a long rein so they can kind of just get used to carrying the rider's weight. The so once we've walked around for 10 minutes, we, we will pick up our reins. And the first thing that we look for when we start to train is that we look for the rhythm of the trot, rhythm of the walk, rhythm of the trot, rhythm of the gait, okay? And I don't think you can you can overemphasize the importance of this. I would go so far as to tell my students that if you control the rhythm, you can control the horse, right? That the horse, in fact, I would argue that every disobedience, bar none, is always preceded by a change of rhythm. And there's virtually no exception to that. You may think that you didn't feel it because if you get on horses that are a little bit athletic, the change of rhythm and the disobedience seem to happen simultaneously. But if you were to really break it down, you'll see that the first thing the horse did was change the rhythm and then there's the disobedience. So if you can find a rhythm that's maybe a little bit more than the horse offers of his own accord and then he should just trot around in a nice rhythm. Now the exception to a little bit more than he offers of his own accord, if I'm riding a horse that's a little bit hot, that comes out a little bit goey, so to speak, I would want to ride that horse a little bit under the pace, so to speak. In other words, I would ask him to offer, to give me a little less than he's offering of his own accord. I would ask him to kind of, it's exactly the opposite, right? But if I'm on, you know, these school horses, generally speaking, the goal is going to be that you ask them to do a little bit more than they offer of their own accord. So when you're riding, like even if you're just going on a hack and you're asking your horse to walk, get used to the idea that you want the walk to be distinctly rhythmically four beats like one two three four slowing down or speeding up they're both taking you out of rhythm and it, and, it, and it will delay your training so this should be your goal at that point like you could spend you know depending on the horse depending on the level of training depending on um your experience as a rider you could spend your entire riding session just working on the rhythm right thinking one two one two whether it's in the walk the trot or the canter um rhythm is your number one priority right so that's it for this week that's the number one the bottom of the training period uh next week we'll talk a little bit about relaxation which is the next step in the training pyramid but if you have any questions send me an email or something or send drop us a comment it's at ismyhorsehappy.com we'd love to hear what you think and what 
some of the training methods that you use or if you've ever sort of concentrated on the first three levels of the training pyramid as well. I know, it's almost supper time, so I have to go now apparently because I'm late. Anyway, so if you want to uh, send us an email, me, Radley, somebody will answer, okay? And in the meantime, remember to thank your horse and we will see you next week. Okay, thanks. All right. I just